Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. I wanted to make a follow-up to the Cheetu Box video that I made a handful of weeks ago talking about how Cheetu Box was locking down the boards on newer resin 3D printers so that you can only slice your files with Cheetu Box Pro. Since making that video, they put out a statement saying, no, 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 there is a free version of their software that will be compatible with those printers. Uh, and that they sounds like they're going to be making some sort of an SDK available that other manufacturers or slicing companies will be able to try and start utilizing. I'm a little skeptical on that one to see if that actually happens and how it works. But I actually have now my hands on some new machines that are running this new board and wanted to confirm a few things out there that people have been asking questions about or just wondering. So I've actually been printing with the Elgu Mars 3 here over the past week. It's running fantastic. I have a full video up on this tomorrow. We'll be showing off some of the prints, but I ended up having to use the latest version of Cheetu Box to actually slice files for this machine. And that's one of the first things that I wanted to confirm. Yes, you have to use either Cheetu Box Pro or Cheetu Box Basic to slice files that will run on these newer board machines. I tried creating a file in Lychee, would not work. Tried creating a file in an older version of Cheetu Box, and it also would not work on the Mars 3. I also have a frozen Sonic Mega 8K that I'll be unboxing here starting tomorrow uh, that I'll be showing off sometime next week, and it's gonna be the same situation. This is gonna be the same thing that you're gonna see on any Cheetu board-based 3D printer moving forward. The workaround that they recommended was, oh, well, you can still, uh, you can still, you know, if you want to generate your supports in Lychee or Prusa Slicer or any orientation or any hollow, do any of that other crazy stuff, you can do that there, export it as an STL, then bring it into Cheetu Box, and then do all of your slicing for the machines. I think that's a huge pain in the ass workaround that I don't want to have to deal with. So hopefully that whole SDK thing is not really a myth, but something that actually holds through, or better yet, they make it so that you're not locked in to that weird new CTB file format that just locks it so that you can't print anything. I also have a number of other 3D printers here on the table from different manufacturers and wanted to confirm that I have tested printing files on these machines with the latest version of Cheetu Box and Lychee Slicer. So uh, I can confirm that if you want to work with Cheetu Box version 1.9, which is their new basic free version, you also have to update the firmware on your different 3D printers. The problem is with that is that not all printers are on that list currently on that page and have firmware available for you to update to to be able to work with that particular slicer. So that means, so like the Anycubic Mono X here, which is one of my favorite resin 3D printers, it's a great mid-size resin 3D printer, I can't actually slice anything with Cheetu Box version 1.9. I get errors for that anytime I try and slice a file in version 1.9 for this machine because it uses a non-standard file format that previously worked on that software. I've also gone through the process of updating the firmware on a few other machines and testing out if you can actually still slice files. So here on the Epax E6, I've gone through and showing off here on screen where I was able to print a file previously that I had sliced. This is prior to upgrading the firmware. I tried loading in a, a Cheetu Box file that I sliced in version 1.9, it errors out because I haven't updated the firmware. As soon as I update the firmware, I'm able to print that file that I, uh, that I sliced in version 1.9, Cheetu Box Basic. I could also still print my previous CTB files that were on this machine. I also am able to print files that I've sliced over in Lychee as well after upgrading the firmware. So that's great to see that if you're on those older machines, you can still work with other slicers, slice files, and it'll work properly. The issue is with the newer machines where you can't do that. You're locked into using whatever versions of Cheetu Box that are available for those particular machines to generate your slice files. And here I'm gonna cut away and we're gonna listen to me talk through on my cell phone of me trying to slice some files for the Mars 3 with Cheetu Box Basic on my Mac. Oh, playing the waiting game here as this tries to export this file. It slices super fast, but then when you try to export it, it just takes forever. Oh my gosh. I, 
It's not even processing right now. And I've already killed the program and restarted it once. So uh, yeah, good times. Yeah, and it uh, just crashed shortly after that. All right, so I'm trying to print these pre-supported miniatures from Archville and Games. And I, I honestly, I just don't get it. I, I don't get what is taking this so long to slice and export when uh, my other files that were much larger than this <laughs> uh, printed, uh, created the files, the print files much, much faster than this here. Uh, this is gonna take forever. And guess what? It just crashed again. <laughs> this is turning into a good time. All right, the same files uh, from Archville and Games I have loaded into Lychee, and we're going to skip the supports and preview and go straight to the export. And yeah, sure, let's export and slice. And there we go. This is rocking and rolling, and look how fast that is going. I don't get why Cheeto Box takes so damn long to actually generate these files. All right, just to make sure I'm not crazy here. So I just brought back in the same two files. This is Chutu Box version 1.9 here. I'm gonna slice these. This slice is super fast, which is awesome. That's, that's incredible. But when I go to save and save, I'm in writing file limbo here. Maybe this is just a Mac issue with this version of the slicer. Uh, this is painful though. And this is the only thing I can slice with for my Elgu Mars 3. <laughs> uh, okay, good times. This latest iteration, like previous ones when they put out a big update, just do not appear to be stable, but I'm still forced to use that slicer. It's the only thing I can print with this machine. And now I'm in a weird space because I've updated my Cheetu Box version on my computer and on my Mac, I can't run two iterations of that software. I don't know if that's something that you can do on a PC, but when I've done that previously, it caused all sorts of issues with my profiles disappearing and overwriting each other or settings from one support settings, overwriting something else and another when I tried to use different versions of the software at the same time. So now, I'm kind of stuck in this weird space for something like the Anycubic Mono X, which I can't print anything with Cheetu Box. They're now forcing me to use Lychee as a slicer for printing anything for this 3D printer. So again, it's this weird, what the heck were they thinking by doing this? If they were trying to drive business to use their slicer, it's in some cases forcing people to go to other slicers to get their printing needs done. Another thought process that I saw online was, hey, I'm just never gonna update my firmware for my machine. That's crazy to me. If new firmware updates are coming and there's improvements coming with these machines, I want those firmware updates. But now I can't update the firmware for these machines because I'm gonna have to be using this latest version of Cheetu Box, which depending on if I have a new machine or if an old machine, if I have multiple old machines and a new machine, how am I supposed to be able to dual wield slicers so that one works and one doesn't work? It's just a horrible place that they're putting people in when it comes to using these slicers. By the way, I haven't had a chance to use the Pro version yet because it's not as of the time of recording this video, not available for Mac yet. I believe it comes out next week, so I'll be for sure updating and trying it out and seeing what it's like, and I'll be more than likely making a video on it. Again. I'm a fan of Cheetu Box. This version that they just put out, the 1.9, it had some new settings there and the resin settings that are based on what I was seeing through their detailed explanation. Detailed was that you're, it's gonna help improve your print time and print speeds for your machines, which is fantastic. I'm honestly waiting for 3D Printing Pro to put out a video that explains for how to use those settings because I still don't quite understand how to use them and I'm just leaving them blank for now. So if you're interested in seeing if your printer is compatible with Cheetu Box Pro or their basic version, they have a listing on their website of printers currently that are there that have firmware available. You can click on the link, it'll take you to a place where you can download the latest firmware and update on the machine. But again, keep in mind that it's gonna have a hard time if you have printers from different brands that all can't be firmware updated to work with that. You might now end up being forced to use Lychee or Prusa Slicer for certain machines and Cheetu Box for other machines depending on what your situation's looking like. But let me know down in the comments what you think about this. And again, if you're in the same mindset that I am that this is 
not a great idea that this is just a big step backwards in terms of how this should be working in our 3D printing space. For us as consumers of these products, please reach out to the 3D printing manufacturers of the printers that you're buying or that you're pre-ordering them from to let them know what you think about this. Reach out to Chitu Systems and Chitu Box to let them know what you think about this. The only way that we're gonna see change in this is that if we continue to be vocal about this. And again, I do not think this is good. Just don't lock down the boards to certain file formats. It's as simple as that. There's gotta be a more open standardized file format that's readily accessible by any slicer out there. Cheeto Systems, if you wanna make more money, try to keep it as open as possible. You're gonna drive people away with this. That's all I've gotta say.